Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2022 State of the Sasquatch Address. I am Sasquatch, otherwise known as Gavi Sas, and I thank you all for your attendance, your viewership, whatever the proper terminology is for what is going on here tonight. Uh, thank you, um, and uh, here we go. As usual, I will be splitting this up into four separate sections with a bit of overlap between them all, as is usual, um, between my faith, my family situation, my fitness, and my finances. Not giving you actual raw numbers, but you get the raw you get the rough idea. Um, beginning as is quite typical, I will be starting with uh, a brief overview of my faith journey in the previous year. Uh, as has been my practice for the last several years, I have read through the Bible six times in the year 2021. Uh, not as a bragging sense, but just as a matter of personal devotion, and this is the place where I just sort of tell what happened. Uh, as I've done it for enough years now, it really isn't anything special. It's just what I do. Um, and that being said, I have learned quite a bit. Every time you read through the Bible, there is an opportunity to learn something and to experience something that you have not yet. To rediscover old passages or to discover fresh and new ones that you've read a thousand times before but never quite got the meaning or the grasp of and I can certainly say that I have done that many times in this past year. Uh, as that is also the case, I have been able to take those lessons and apply them, not just in my own life but also as a matter of teaching other people. Uh, I've had opportunity multiple times throughout this past year to either teach personal Bible studies or to speak generally at my church here in Michigan, and for which I've been very thankful to the local pastor, or my, my pastor, uh, for allowing me those opportunities. In fact, I have another one coming up uh, this coming Sunday, which makes this a potentially very truncated State of the Sasquatch address as I have to prepare all of that between tonight and tomorrow. So, lack of time. Yes. Um, as things are progressing ministerially, I am also going for my minister's license. I had intended in the previous year to have already achieved or already a, a, attained my license, but I missed. There's two, uh, two opportunities within my uh, fellowship to to get licensed. One is in the spring, the other is in the fall. During the spring, it just didn't work out. And in the fall, you would typically go before a board of elders. And as there was a sort of, I don't want to say political, but it was very, I mean, that's really no other word for it. There was a bit of a political shakeup in the state of Michigan as a part of the larger organization where we actually separated into two separate districts, but one being greater Michigan, the other one being the Metro Detroit area. And as I was part of the newly formed Metro Detroit district, um, yes, we had to elect a board of elders for people to go in front of, and uh, we did that in the fall, so I was not able to go in front of a non-existent board of elders, but I will be doing that uh, in April. I believe it is April the 7th, and hopefully, as I am well acquainted with all but one of the members of that board, I should be able to uh, to become licensed uh, in, in April. This past year also saw a bit of fulfillment for something that I have been praying about and teaching Bible study after Bible study after Bible study for a long time. A one of one of the first people that I ever taught a Bible study to, at long last, has finally finally decided to um, to get baptized, and so I was able to perform myself the first baptism I've ever done ever. Um, like I, I got baptized and I've helped other people come to the decision to be baptized, but this was the first one where I actually got to, to do the baptizing. And that was a most, a most rewarding experience as it was a long time in coming. I have been working with a particular gentleman for eight years and finally was able to fulfill scripture and baptize him by full immersion in water, in the name of Jesus, as it is said to be done uh, in Acts chapter 2, 8, 10, 19, all throughout, all throughout the New Testament. Um, and so that was of a, a, a rather momentous occasion for me, and I'm, I'm very thankful that I was able to, to complete that journey, as it were. Not to say that the, that baptism is the end-all, be-all, uh, for there are certain other things which are mentioned throughout Scripture that would certainly com contribute to 
a person's salvational experience. But such as it was, that was a major milestone, which I was able to help help someone cross the line. And I, and I am very thankful, not only that I was able to be used in that capacity, but also very thankful that someone who I consider to be a very personal friend made that decision uh, on their own. And that was, like I said, a very rewarding experience. Um, in regards to that sort of mentality of helping people come to a decision. In the past year, I started a new YouTube channel, which I posted a few things to, and I also made a separate entity on locals.com called Truth and Value. I posted there only a few times and sort of let it fall away, but I am presently of a mind that I should be reinvigorating that. Not only because in the past few weeks, I've had people just randomly start following me on there with no additional content for them to view. And I feel somewhat bad that they are subscribed to something that is not uh, producing new content for them. But also because in the past year, I've had a couple of things come up, a couple of statements which have been made to me, which I find personally bothersome. And I feel a just innate need to clarify my position on a few things. And that seems to be the best avenue in which to do so as it is designed to do that. So, um, in the next few weeks, I, I'm not going to do what I've done in the past and say, I'm going to start doing this on this date and, and make it happen because I tend to have a problem while fulfilling that. But, and I've also realized in this past year, how I can avoid falling through on things like that. But in the me in the meantime, um, I am looking to, to reinvigorate truth and value and also to address some of these concerns and probably do it in a much larger, broader format, beginning at why I believe in God and, and branching off from there into much more specific, uh, specific facets as to why I believe specific things about the Christian experience that I do, providing scripture, of course, because if it is not from the Bible, why are you believing it? Um, so that will be something that is perhaps something you can look forward to if that is of interest to you. Um, let us address family. In the past year, my attempts to become unsingle have failed three times. Uh, there was a young lady I was, uh, dating, I was attempting to date kind of dating not dating on and off sort of thing at the beginning of the year. And, uh, I was finally rejected permanently. And, uh, in, in most uh, dramatic fashion, I shall remember that forever. Um, <laughs> for as long as I live, um, fondly, but it was, it was certainly a very final way of, of being, um, rejected. So I accept that. Um, in the middle of the year, I encountered a young lady and did not end up meeting her in person until December and was again rejected in a very grandiose, well, I mean, not in a grandiose fashion, but in a very final sort of way. As I attempted to introduce myself to her, uh, she became positively terrified and just left. So not a lot happening there. Typical. I mean, what else is going to happen when you encounter a Sasquatch in the wild? You just say, that's terrifying, and you run away. I don't blame her in the slightest. I am a very terrifying individual. Um, something I do blame perhaps somebody else for is I was attempting to get onto an online dating site in accordance with my particular uh, faith. There's a uh, sort of our brand version of, of a dating site that I was attempting to get in, uh, involved with uh, at the behest of my pastor. And I do have to poke fun at him because he was very adamant that I should be becoming unsingle. And this particular site, which he recommended, uh, requires pastoral approval, and he never gave it. And so they refunded my uh, admission fee <laughs> and said, try again later, which I have not done yet. But uh, given the success of certain of my friends on uh, similar dating sites, perhaps it might be time to try again. Um, I won't get into the specifics of that, but some longtime friends of mine from the Internet have recently either gotten married or have met someone with whom they are speaking in very serious terms about marriage through online dating sites. And there's a certain uh, level of utility that I'm finding that if you go to a place where people are looking to become attached, it is much easier to find a way to attach yourself to them as opposed to just encountering them in the wild. So perhaps I'm, I'm growing beyond my 
very biased distaste of dating sites in general and just going, okay, there might be a purpose for this. Uh, I will say that I'm very happy, very thankful, very happy that in the last year I was able to spend some time with Masters. He came up to visit me in Michigan and we went to the uh, Muppets presentation at the Henry Ford Museum. Um, I've also been able to connect on a better, to a much greater extent with uh, Oswin. Uh, very, very thankful that he and I have been able to spend a lot more time together online. And there's some potential that later this year he and I will be able to get together with another group of folks for a, uh, a camping adventure which will be broadcast to some extent. We'll see what happens. Um, I've also made a number of new friends, but I will, uh, IRL, but I will get into that in a brief moment here, uh, as that is you know, more, more adequately covered in the, uh, in the finance section, I think, um, as to how I encountered those folks. Um, also, my... Uh, continuing Dungeons and Dragons adventures from last year have continued on and grown uh, dramatically uh, to the point where I am now multiple big bad evil guys in multiple people's campaigns because of my apparent command of the human voice, or at least mine. Yours, not so much. But mine, adequate. Uh, I've had great, great, great enjoyment being a part of multi multiple people's campaigns and embodying different characters. Uh, I think with all of my attempts at voice acting having sort of fallen asunder, this is a good way for me to channel some of my more creative aspects, at least at the moment. Um, with that being said, uh, as development is happening, uh, let's talk about fitness. This year, I can say without any question, I'm in the best condition of my entire life. Uh, as a part of my uh, change in employment this past year, I found myself in a very physical job for about six months, um, still working at that same company, but in a different position now. And that very physical job caused me to drop about 30 pounds over those six months. And I am very, very strong as more so than I have ever been before in my life. Um, however, at the same time, that progression from flabby Gavi to fit Gavi almost killed Gavi so mixed blessing I have certainly developed a number of aches and pains which I did not have some years ago and probably did not have a full year ago as a result of that I can only imagine the level of arthritis that shall come upon me should I continue to work there uh, on into the future um, which kind of brings me to the finance section not a lot in fitness never is just either I did well or I didn't I did well this year, for the most part, kind of by necessity. Um, the employment that I've been referencing is at a glass factory uh, just a few miles from my house. Um, and by the way, I did, in fact, buy a house this year, sort of. It's a trailer, and it is an absolute fixer-upper. And I have fixed up quite a bit and found out it was more of a fixer-upper than I had intended or thought it to be. And I'm very thankful that I've had the assistance of friends and new connections to be able to help bring it to a much more complete level of, liv of livability. Uh, but it still has quite a bit of a ways to go. Um, and uh, yes, enough on that. It is very expensive. I am already twice as invested into it as I had intended to be because of how ungodly, unprepared this house was to be occupied. But it is now much better, and I still only have about two major projects left to do to get it to being a fully functional uh, residence again. Thank God. Um, but to help pay for that, I did change jobs. I was working at the law firm previously, as I believe I've mentioned in years past. And this, I transitioned again to a very physical job at a glass factory where I was unloading a tempering oven for six months before getting promoted to running the tempering oven. And as much as the unloading was killing me, the loading and the running of the oven was killing me even faster. Um, long days, high stress, everything just going wrong. It was it was about to severely impact my health. I was told by three doctors and a dentist to quit, which is quite a number of people, not including my pastor, people at my church, my family. Everyone was telling me to quit. In fact, some people still are, which is potentially something which may be happening in the near future, which is kind of still something I'm struggling with because 
uh, as I had uh, attempted to quit, I put in my two weeks notice and was going to go work at a a different job some several miles away further than I currently am. Um, they made an counter offer to me and offered me more money to work fewer hours. And I thought that was a wonderful, um, a wonderful accomplishment. And I just actually just yesterday finished my qualification period to go from one raise to a second raise. So when my paycheck hits tomorrow, it's probably going to be a very happy day, a very happy day. But (laughs) needless to say, um, I have been, at the same time as I was making this negotiation, another job I was made aware of, which has a potential to be even fewer hours for even more money, and I am being heavily pressured by people to take that, which I'm struggling with because I like to negotiate in good faith. As I have made an agreement, I like to fulfill my agreement. However, it is very tempting to just sort of pick up and go, well, I can work from home, only eight hours a day, period, flat, and get an additional three to five dollars above the 21 I'm going to be making come Wednesday. So <laughs> it's it's a bit of a tough situation. It's something I'm going to have to deal with and, and figure out. Um, but I will say the Glass Factory has been a wonderful place for me to be, not necessarily because of the work, although, again, that physical aspect certainly has helped to build up my body. Um, but it also has helped to build up my social connections. And I have been able to connect with dozens of people who I would never have been able to come in contact with. And the Glass Factory being such a place to work as it is, it really requires sort of the highest caliber of person to be there. If you're not a dedicated, hardworking, show up on time and stay late kind of person and have a dedication to complete well, the assign- the task assigned to you, it's not some place that you're going to be able to stick around for very long. And so because it is a p- kind of place that demands that of the people who work there, I've been able to surround myself for the past year with a tremendously high caliber of person. And I am tremendously thankful for that experience and for all the people that I've been able to connect with. Not that any of them are going to hear this and they don't, uh, and they will not, and I, that I don't tell people about this, about this channel or any of them, but, um, I have, this is something that I said to them personally and directly multiple times, because I really truly believe that it is some of the best people I've ever met personally in my life. Just tremendous people rough around the edges for certain. Every one of them has a long storied history to get there, but tremendous people. And I'm very thankful for the time that I was able to spend with them. And, uh, that perhaps is one of the chief reasons why I have not simply jumped upon another, uh, another job opportunity, which would have a much greater a level of freedom and perhaps financial um, financial bolster, which I have found myself to be in great increasing need of, not just because of the ex- increasing expense of my house, but it's something which I'm not sure I've, I've discussed in any of these before. I have, over the last several years, developed quite the extensive firearms addiction, and I have uh, scratched that itch perhaps way too much. In the past several months, I have spent thousands of dollars on firearms and I intend to spend thousands more this year. Um, but in moderation, (laughs) I say that having said I spent thousands of dollars, um, and I intend to spend thousands more. Um, I have, I believe I'm now up to 13 firearms that I own from various sources and various calibers and various configurations for various purposes. And I have developed an extreme love for going to the range and spending time and taking new people. Uh, Since my first purchase, since I was 12, we'll talk about that perhaps some other time, but I did did purchase my first shotgun when I was 12 and it was kept by my parents. It was just, I, I paid the money for it and it became mine at the age of 18. You can stop freaking out about it. People who are crazy about this kind of thing. Um, But... Uh, Since that first purchase, when I made my first new purchase in 2020, I have since caused more than eight people to purchase their first gun. And I believe this past weekend, I've just convinced another person, one of the people who I work with at the glass factory, to decide that it's time for him to make his first purchase as well, which I could not be more thrilled about. In fact, it is of some considerable frustration to me that when I was 
dying at the glass factory and was starting to put out some feelers to find additional additional or alternative work i um put in applications at several gun stores and ammunition manufacturers and uh, optics producers to try and get some sort of position within the firearms field and was soundly turned down and rebuffed by every single one of them so that was fun but not really um i love to be involved in firearms and perhaps it's something that I'll pursue in the future, go to Sonoran Desert Institute or something and get a a gunsmithing degree so that I can at least work on my own guns, if not work on other people's. Uh, It is uh, something that I just simply enjoy. Um, Probably, probably, probably far too much, but uh, what's wrong with that? Um, that being said, this is the part where I'm going to transition again to places that you can find me. As you may have noticed in the past year, Masters and I did a podcast that ended sometime around August, I believe, and I've not posted, I think, much of anything on here since then. Uh, there will be a link down the, in the description for uh, my Instagram, which I started back in June or July, somewhere in there. Um I have posted several times on there and will continue to do so as soon as I find time and inclination. Uh, But I've not gotten much of that in the last month or two. But if you're interested in my day to day, that is where it will be. This past year, I've also done that face reveal that I've been talking about doing for years and have been putting off and avoiding, but just got tired of it and did it in conjunction with the D&D campaign that I was doing with Masters and have had a great amount of uh, reward from spending time with him and with the newly rebranded Wild West Dan, um, who has been posting those over on his channel. Um, So I will also have a link to Wild West Dan's YouTube channel in the description down below so that you can check those out. We are currently one session into the World's Worst Adventurers Campaign 2. Uh, Campaign 1 ended rather abruptly, but a Campaign 2 perhaps is a bit more well thought out, and we are going to continue with that uh, much longer, I am hoping, because, again, I have great expectation and excitement for the character that I'm playing in that campaign. Um, that is largely where I'm at. So there, I'm going to be posting to Instagram, posting or being part of Wild West Dance channel uh, or as part of this cam- uh, D&D campaign. And I will also be posting over on Truth and Value. For this channel, I don't know what to do with it. I'll, the majority of this has been video game related and this past year I have found myself increasingly less enamored of video games I've played them hardly at all mostly due to a lack of time but more frequently in recent days in recent months I have a considerable lack of interest in them as well I play them almost exclusively as a social thing to be with other people um, to maintain friendships and relationships online and more and more, most of those online relationships are converting to more of a D&D format as opposed to being video games. So my interest in maintaining my gaming presence has waned dramatically. I don't know how to feel about that. It's, it's odd. I feel, I feel as a longtime gamer, I should be very sad about it's going, but instead I'm just kind of in the place where I'm like, yeah. I think I'm at that age where I should just be about this point where video games are becoming less important. They aren't monopolizing my time, and instead I'm focusing on other things like ministry and upon finding a future family, starting one of those up. Um, And perhaps, again, uh, doing a bit more targeted fitness goals as opposed to just generally working myself to the point of exhaustion. And, of course... um, improving my financial situation as much as possible. Again, that decision is forthcoming, but oddly difficult for me. Um, So, I'm not sure what to do. Every year I kind of set some sort of goal for myself. Not like a New Year's resolution, but just an expectation of what's coming. I mean, obviously I'm going to continue reading my Bible. In fact, today was the end of my first 60-day cycle of reading through the Bible. Uh, just finished up Revelation a few hours ago, 
and I'm looking forward to starting back over in Genesis and a new translation tomorrow, as is my as has become my custom to not just read through the same translation over and over again, but to change back and forth between several of them throughout the year so that I can get a more complete picture of because one translation is not necessarily perfect and other ones may have a more accurate uh, description of, of particular wording and such or inspire new ideas. So um, that's something that I'm going to be doing. I'm again going to be getting licensed this year, God willing, and the district board willing. And beyond that, I don't know. I, I have no concrete plans at the moment. A lot of the things which I, which I would have been planning for are not present. The only major plans I have beyond just getting my house ready are to buy a few guns. I have two of them picked out, uh, perhaps a third one if I can find it. It's very rare um, and not really that much else. It's just sort of a weird transition year, I think. And I don't know how to how to plan for the transition. I'm not sure what lies in store ahead for this year. I'm not sure how to position myself to take the best advantage of it. Uh, the main purpose of my taking the job at the glass factory was to try and reach people here in this local area so, they, so I can help build this church that I'm a part of. And as I've invited many people there to the church several times and have had nobody show up yet, it's a question as to whether or not staying there is of, an, is a, is of any benefit. Because if the, if the point, if the idea is to bring people in and nobody's coming, I mean, is there is there benefit to staying there? Is there is there benefit? Is there value? I don't know. I find myself in an oddly uncertain place, and I don't know how to get out of it, but I suspect that by this time next year, I will have a much different tune to say, to sing. Singing still. That's another thing. Kuya Carol's happened to... I'm so thankful that most of you weren't there. I mean, whoever whoever watches this. I don't know if this is still considered an active channel at this point or not, or if it's mostly dead. Mostly dead. We need Miracle Max alone to revive it somewhat. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the coming year. But I'm not sure what it holds. It's a very odd position to be in where everything that you would have expected to be done is just up in the air. There's no no defined right or wrong or left or right. It's just, it's just there. And with all that openness, there's great potential, but also great potential for wandering into the weeds, which for me is something I'm tend, I'm prone to doing. So thank you all for your time, for your attentiveness. I am genuinely thankful to each and every one of you who tuned in today for being my friend, for being my viewer, for my listener, whatever it is that you, that you are to me for the people who are concerned about my well being or just curious about this random guy you hear, listen, you listen to on the internet from time to time. Um, helps me vent, helps me get a few things straight in my mind. And hopefully in this few year, in this coming year, I'll get a few more of those things straight. So thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart for your continuing persistence to put up with me. And uh, I hope that you all have a wonderful year. And if things should happen that I don't post again until next year, God bless you until then. And may everything that you put your hand to prosper. So long.